Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Simona, for uh, chairing this session and for introducing uh, introducing the book. Um, I would like to begin by introducing my, myself. Like Simona mentioned, I'm a second year PhD uh, student at LTU. Uh, but the work he, that I'm going to present here about Mumbai is part of my uh, first PhD, which is from Auckland, from the University of Auckland. Uh, I would like to thank Tinu for making me a part of this book and um, my supervisors at University of Auckland for the guidance and support with the work. And finally, to the editorial team at Edgar, Edgar, Edward Ed, Elgar Publishing, uh, who made this book possible. So thank you, everybody. Um, the well, like I mentioned, I come from India and I have lived in a number of Indian cities, including Mumbai for almost 11 years. And uh, Mumbai being considered the financial capital um, of India is it ha has a number of problems. And one, I mean, including um, water shortages, housing, housing shortages, flooding, everything. Uh, but the one particular event that I remember the most is walking through 10 kilometers, um, uh, walking 10 kilometers through waist deep water in uh, July 2005, uh, when the city basically shut down because of um, heavy rainfalls and flooding. That makes you really wonder why, in spite of all its uh, problems, is Mumbai planning on more um, intensification and more development when it, it should actually be focusing on its infrastructural deficiencies first. So this case study um, focuses on redevelopment of the old historic core of Mumbai, which consists about 16,000 old dilapidated buildings and um, which are planned to be um, replaced by these new swanky towers. Um, the main method or the main theory that I have used is that of urban metabolism. So metabolism is defined as the sum of the biological, uh, biological, chemical and physical processes that occur within an organism or an ecosystem to enable it to exist indefinitely. And cities have been compared to living organisms in the sense that cities transform raw materials, fuel, water and material, uh, water into built environment, human biomass and waste. So urban metabolism is the some total of the technical and socio-economic processes that occur in the cities, resulting in growth, production of energy, and the elimination of waste. Um, <clears throat> urban metabolism is influenced by several factors, such as the energy and material that flows in, its potential to harness or harvest um, energy and water, um, its uh, shape, its architecture, its morphology, the population densities, and a lot of other things. Um, and there, there have been different models and the different ex ex extensions proposed. Uh, but the one that I looked at uh, particularly was uh, proposed by Minx and her colleagues, um, which provides three extensions to the standard model, uh, which is intake of energy that th goes through the urban system and waste. And the extensions are the environmental impacts the urban quality, and also what is happening within the urban system, the patterns and the drivers uh, that define this urban system. Um, so uh, to just provide a quick history of Mumbai, um, the seven islands that come to constitute Mumbai were inhabited initially by fishing, farming, and toady tapping communities, and they were ruled by a number of kingdoms. Uh, for for several centuries until the Portuguese settlers came in in the 19th, um, 1530s. And then they passed it on to, um, to the British in uh, 1961 when uh, their prince got married to the British, uh, uh, princess got married to the British prince. Uh, and then it was given to the East India Company seven years later, who set up the trading post. So, uh, this this is the seven islands, which over a period of time have undergone a lot of uh, re, um, um, 
infrastructural development and reclamation to to become what it is today so over the years um oops, sorry <laughs> Over the years, uh, East India Company changed its policy from trade to conquest, and they started doing a lot of infrastructural projects, large scale reclamations, construction of roadways, railways, housing, commercial districts. And the principal reason for Mumbai's transformation is considered to be um, the development of the cotton textile industry. And post independence, um, Mumbai continued growing along the toward growing northwards, um, the, forming the Greater Mumbai. And subsequently in 1967, the Mumbai Metropolitan Region. So it's been growing into the main uh, mainland from being just a combination of seven islands. So that, that's the urbanization history of Mumbai. Um, so initially there were no, because it, it, it wasn't planned to become a big city or a central central hub. There were no plans of how to develop the city. It just grew organically. And uh, the development control uh, development controls based on spatial dimensions were introduced in the 20th century. But uh, the development plan actually came uh, into being only in the 1960 uh, only in 1964. Um, and in 1939, um, the first major reg legislation for Mumbai's um, rent restriction act were, was enacted, which basically froze the existing uh, rents. And uh, the controlled rents resulted in poor condition of the housing since the rental income was inadequate to pay for repairs. So as a result, in 1969, cess taxes were introduced and a levy was placed um, on landlords by the municipal authorities to uh, who overtook over um, took over property repairs and um, and reconstruction if necessary. So cess buildings uh, were constructed in the 1970s. Uh, these these ones in the front that we can see um, and uh, um, uh, and and over the years the government has been trying to. Uh, encourage more development into the, in the city, but because of the low FSI um, um, proposed in the development plans, it has not been able to do so. So it has um, tried to increase the FSI um, a few times in the past, but nothing really happened because these are already very dense developments. And in finally, in 2009, um, the development control rules uh, 3379 uh, was introduced, which is basically to promote cluster developments. So this uh, project uh, we are looking at, or which was the first main case study, is, is one of those projects. Um, Bhendi Bazaar is located in, in the north of uh, Seaward, uh, in the island city of Mumbai. And the existing site consists of more, mostly um, low rise buildings ranging from one to seven floors um, with an average height of about three to four floors, uh, excluding two existing towers on the site. And um, there's 266 buildings in the existing development are to be replaced by these 23 independent structures, uh, which includes these 15 towers um, uh, over five podiums. So that is going to drastically change the form, urban form uh, in this part of the city, as you can see from um, what it is in the, it, what it would still be in the surrounding areas. And the proposed development is funded by the construction and sale of additional uh, floor space, uh, mainly for residential use. So that is going to increase the number of units. It's like, uh, it is about 1,400 extra residential units will be which will be constructed to fund this project so the fsi increases to almost 10 from being about four, four or five which was currently um, so the site coverage and, and here you can see the development in in, in, in a cross section and how the heights and the 
distance between the buildings are going to change, the complete change in build form. Um, the existing stall towers are going to basically become drops. Uh, so the site coverage would reduce by 15% and the active frontage would reduce by 69%. So the density of the development uh, would increase by about 25% to about 1000 units per hectare. So that is like a big increase in a already really dense um, development. <clears throat> um, again, I will not go into the details um, because you can always refer to them in the book. Uh, but what I would like to focus on is that the increase in, 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 in the metabolic flows, the water consumption, which is in Suppose, which is expected to increase 198%, and the electricity consumption also uh, is uh, the residential electricity consumption is supposed to increase by 121%. You can see how the how the differences are in the different types of uses, and also the reason why uh, the residential electricity use actually increases, and then the commercial um, electricity use is also supposed to increase by about 110% also mainly because of uh, the increased use of air conditioners um, due to the change in the build form <clears throat> and also the social aspirations of the people. Um, <clears throat> and of course, uh, with increased in intake comes increased output, um, uh, which is like increase in the solid waste generation. But more importantly, it also in the carbon emissions. Now, the carbon emissions are mainly from two main sources, which is electricity uh, from within the buildings usage and, and from the vehicles. But uh, as we can see, the major increase is from electricity. Um, but the thing is, uh, since the uh, the source of this electricity is, uh, the, uh, the source of the electricity is usually outside the city limits, uh, their, their effects are usually not really considered. So, um, so this this is, is this is one of the uh, predatory uh, effects of of these dense large uh, developments, which which really um, take the resources away from um, from other places uh, and like by the construction of dams or the construction of high, um, um, so for coal thermal power plants, which are which have a ne very negative effect on the environment and all the people living around it, but not on the actual settlement. Uh, but but also the increase in uh, em emissions from vehicles, which is gonna affect this, which is which is expected to happen within the site, of course. Uh, so in terms of urban quality, uh, the idea is to improve the infrastructure by providing more civic and amenities and providing more open spaces. Um, and new technologies are supposed to be incorporated, but their potential to actually uh, produce uh, or supplement the increase is very minimal. And um, while the while, while the infrastructure is supposed to be developed within the site, the connecting sites are not taken into consideration. So the pipelines, for example, or uh, water supply and drainage pipes within the site are supposed to be new, new pipelines are supposed to be put in, but they still connect to the old system. So unless there is a systematic development of the uh, infrastructure, it is not going to be uh, useful. Uh, and, and then comes the accessibility. Um, and there is supposed to be an increase in the um, increase in and in the use of personal vehicles with more provision of parking spaces, um, but not much thought has been given to the public and semi-public modes. Um, the housing quality is supposed to increase because uh, improve uh, because the new houses are supposed to be um, one bigger, newer, and have more amenities. Um, but um, um, the the but it has a negative effect on the um like we discussed on the metabolic flows and employment can come in, in terms of employment and community um uh, like i mentioned before the the um, active frontage is actually going to reduce and a lot of the in this lot of the uh, commercial activities in this area is basically based on being uh, visible to the 
uh, to the users. So that that would be affected drastically, and we are we expect the the kind of commercial activity that takes place now would change quite drastically. And of course, like I mentioned before, um, the there is increase in uh, there would be an increase in in, in the pollution levels. Um, so after having a look at this particular site, uh, we extrapolated the data to all all of these um, previously discussed cest properties, which is um, basically all these gray areas within the island city. And that's about um, um, about 16,000 um, buildings, like I mentioned before, low rise buildings, um, and which are expected to be uh, replaced by um, tall towers um, and the redevelopment of the site would result in an increase in population of about 25% greater than the existing um, than the existing. Uh, and in terms of metabolic flows, um, without going into the numbers, if if we just look a we look at the broad picture, the water requirement would increase to an equivalent of constructing a new dam. Uh, the electricity consumption would increase to the that of um, building a new thermal power plant. Uh, and like I discussed before, all of these have um, an effect uh, both within the with, within the development, but also have far reaching uh, consequences outside the limits of the development. Um, and and with well, the, there is provision for more parking spaces, about 50,000 new car, car parking spaces. Um, and while the, um, the uh, while, while the idea was to actually increase open space provisions, um, it uh, and it would create new open spaces, but because of the increase in the population density, the per person availability of open space would actually reduce uh, to one point 07 square meter as opposed to 1.27 uh, existing currently. So um, we, we see that there is a lot more um, ne negative implications as, as compared to positive. So the main implications would be that uh, intensification cannot reduce the metabolic flows, even with the incorporation of new technology, even with the incorporation of renewable technologies. Uh, in cities of developing countries, which are characterized by very low ecological footprint currently and very high population densities. It reduces the potential of the city to meet its resource requirements through the incorporation of renewable technologies and increases the demand on the hinterland. An increased infrastructural provision can improve the quality of life, but improving, but providing the required infrastructure itself has negative impacts on the environment and the urban quality of life and the need uh, to and, and the, therefore we need to stop considering in intensification or increasing FSI as in the case of Indian cities as a means to solve urban problems. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to conclude by just commenting on 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 the whole idea of the book, which is uh, basically that the number of uh, mega cities is estimated to rise in the in, in, uh, from from in the in the future and in terms of scale in terms of scale and rate of growth um, the cases that we discuss um, will eventually also conf uh, comfort uh, their limits to the resources needed for urban metabolism to operate effectively so in this book um, we discuss how vertical and dense major mega projects offer very little resilience the I mean, from all the case studies, um, we see that um, because the motivation behind scale and verticality is particularly due to the image and the desire to become world class, and especially in the case of Mumbai, um, the tower blocks are perceived as modern and um, high sta standard of living. So, um, and, and then the cities are really trying to showcase themselves as world class, smart and livable and green and eco and all these different uh, 
labels that is actually promoting compaction. Um, but the cumulative effect of this rapid urbanization uh, is, is, is resulting in not only environmental uh, problems, but also a lot of uh, so social segregation and change in the uh, social mix of, uh, of the development of, of the redeveloped areas. So smart technologies um, can allow for effective use of resources, but ultimately limit the ability, uh, availability of the resources. So as, as cities grow and demand, grow and demand more uh, ever in ever greater quantities of resources from the hinterland. So increased demand of resources is like a direct result of increasing population, but it is also a result of the policies regarding the urban form. Um, and a top down master planned city or a master planned uh, mega re redevelopment um, uh, and indulge in this kind of uh, uh, vision of, of um, which, which actually takes away the economic diversification, the economic diversification away from the fossil fuels, but in reality, they are actually, uh, they actually predate resources to try and stay afloat in an increasingly competitive, um, um, in, they, they, they actually predate on the resources from, from the hinterland. And me mega projects and mega redevelopments are basically grand experiments to uh, directly or indirectly um, um, mold the nation's feelings. And um, so, so as to attract uh, more, more visitors, more of, uh, attract more commercial investments, affluent workers, and it's and when we 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 discuss how uh, the how I mean while that is true, they actually uh, reduce the I mean they uh, they they can neither. Um, reduce the metabolic flows, or uh, even with the incorporation of renewable te technologies, um, um, they, 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 they cannot. Yeah, exactly. They cannot. Um, re they cannot reduce the metabolic flows, and uh, instead they uh, reduce the potential of the city to meet its uh, resource requirements through the incorporation of renewable uh, technologies. So. Um, and that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you.